Hi folks, how you doing today? This is my first time doing anything like this, so bear with me. I haven't seen a tour done this way, so I thought it would be worth sharing to you all. Um, I may do some other videos later. We'll see more in detail, but for right now, uh, I'm only using a webcam, and I've only got the use of one arm, so we're going to do the best I, I, we, you know, can. The jig I built for testing and demonstration purposes, plus it aids me. It's made of ePay, and the pins are all in poxing in place. Uh, first, we'll take the top off of it. TI housing is the only one you can do this with, so this, everything here is based on that. This video is only for the understanding of how a 1022 action works. It's not intended as an assembly video, as several of the methods would not apply to a standard rotor trigger group. I will be noting areas that I've had troubles, concerns with. Uh, I want to show you one right now. The mag plunger is captive when it's in the gun by the pin. You'll see it here. I don't do not have a spring installed in it right now. Uh, so, I just put that in there so you can see that for the moment. It'll come into play a little bit later. I want to remove that right now so we can get started. You'll notice all the pins are uh, locked tight and in place. Uh, all of them were done originally. I had to remove the one pin you'll see to make this assembly possible. So, uh, keep that in mind. Um, Again, what I want to do is I polish all the metal parts, metal, metal to metal contact parts. Uh, this seems to benefit me overall with no uh, dragging of any kind. The actions are very smooth. I've shot thousands of rounds through them um, and never had a hang up. So I think I'm onto something. Uh, this seems to work for me. I will uh, note that I'm not going to be installing the safety today. Um, there's reasons it just doesn't work in here well with the assembly I'll put together. But I will show you that I polished the little, um, I don't know what you call them, but the, the little dogs that the reset pin goes down into the plunger. I, I do that to all the guns. The plunger's all polished. Uh, I do every single part that I possibly can in the gun, uh, starting with the uh, bolt release. The bolt release is uh, out of a stamped product, and it tends to have edges on it when they shear those edges. So I've gone through and polished all the edges and deburred it completely for this installation. Let me drop that in there right now. Um, on the same note as before, talking about having only one hand, I'm going to have to take that back off, off the jig real quick uh, to drop the magazine plunger and spring in place. And I will set it back on there. Let me get this. I'll try to drop it back on. There, we got it. Not too hard. You notice the hole for the one pin that's missing down there right now. So we'll drop that pin in place. Then we can go install. This is just a standard Ruger uh, magazine release, plunger release arm. I'll drop it on the pin. You notice it doesn't catch right now. But if you take and just bump the pin, it catches it. And then you're all set to go. The uh, ejector pin is the same as the rest of them. It's got a stamped edge on it. And you notice I've polished all the edges, deepered all the edges, makes for just cleaner, cleaner parts overall. Let's get that installed. I've got two different types of uh, tour groups today. I've got a standard uh, rear tour group and I've got a PC tour group. Let's look at the hammers first. Um, there's two different hammers that Bruder uses and also two different types of bushings. Uh, the first 
hammer is the rear mem hammer and you'll notice that it already has what you would call bushings uh, built into them so it doesn't require the use of the bushings we'll show those later let's drop that in place notice the jig has a little bumper here that I put on to install just for when we go to fire it it's a little bumper I'll have to move those around a little bit today you'll see why but uh, we can go ahead and, and do that now as a matter of fact but show, let me drop the, uh, the trigger in the first uh, trigger group is uh it's got a ti trigger but the parts are uh stock rear and so i'm going to use those first just drop that on there we'll talk about the parts a little bit more uh coming up here in a second as you notice the little pin falls out as i put that on the assembly pin it helps a lot you see now that the, the trigger and everything is loose in the housing if you were in back in the cock cocked to set ready mode you would notice that the part of the sear does not touch where the safety is and when you go to fire you drop that that drops down and enters an area in the pocket of the safety where if it was in the safe position uh, that could not happen that is how the safety functions and then uh, you see the movement here what I wanted to show you with the stock set is this large contact area i don't think it's a concern but i'll come across i'll show you this uh, with the other trigger uh it, it may or may not have a uh, major contact area i don't think that it's a problem but again we'll you know we'll work around it let me drop the uh, other kit in there now You notice that uh, on the PC hammer, I have uh, stoned the sides. I always do that, make sure the stone and polish both sides. You notice I also polish the hammer contact area where it contacts the bolt. I think that provides for a really smooth uh, action and less wear also. This again had been polished. But you notice as you come around the top, you change from smooth to a, a kind of a darkened finish. You can see where it hasn't been done. As you come around the hammer, I polish the area right there. Uh, you might be able to see it where the sear has contact with it physically, plus where the hammer strut pin uh, falls in place. That also, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. But I polish the uh, the radius as it comes around. You can see the difference right there. Where the this is the area the sear rotates on as it comes around to catch the engagement point right there. Uh, put that down. Burger uses two different types of bushings. Uh, most use this style. It's uh, they're both identical. They're kind of flanged and colored. Uh, they go halfway in, uh, but they also make another set, which is uh, a full length pin with a little half bushing. And I'm going to use that one today because uh, it's a lot easier for me to work with this setup. So let's drop that on, get the bolt release out of the way a little bit there. Drop the bushing on. We'll drop the hammer on. Notice no small little contact stops up there. We'll take those out of the way. I've also got a, uh, now I've got a PC hammer and sear. You notice the, uh, the undercut right after the sear contact point. I don't know if that helps. Uh, I don't think that it does if you've got proper engagement of everything. Um, I'll also cut away this trigger so that you can see the hammer disconnector and sear in action as we work with it. Let me put that on there right now. Now at this point we have no springs in so everything's kind of floating around loose and uh, 
that's typical you as you can see the movement here uh, no big deal I'm going to drop the uh, hammer stretch spring and now you'll notice that I polish it to uh, polished it and radiused it uh, again it, it it helps that contact when it's in there because I've had the shoulders hang up just a little bit as it goes through its range there. Let me drop that in. Uh, I gotta back up. I gotta pull this frame off, up off the receiver just a little bit to rotate the bolt over the top of that stop pin that I built. So that's, uh, it's easy to do but now let's put the hammer stretch spring in place. You'll also note that I'm, uh, this is not a factory hammer strut spring. I bought it uh, somewhere online. Uh, it's got a very reduced tension to it, but it helps me uh, work the action and see what's going on. Um, it's a lot softer. You notice that the, right now the disconnector is it's disconnected. Uh, there's nothing there to force that action to happen. So I'm going to reset it. You notice to release the hammer now. But as the hammer comes back, the, the little ears on the hammer cause the disconnector to open. That's, that's your, but you know, it's a sear engaged. Uh, that's your hammer reset. That's your safety feature. This will not uh, pull the trigger uh, until you reset the 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 sear, the hammer disconnector sear. You push the trigger forward. You saw it reset there, and as I pull back, the hammer releases. But there's nothing to force the uh, sear contact back up on the hammer and that's what we need in the way of a uh, the uh, trigger pin plunger and spring assembly so I'm going to put that in there now this is a TI trigger so you can load it all from the back so it makes makes for what I'm doing here very very simple and easy for me to do and so now we've forced contact with the sear to ride on the hammer so now it rides back there and catches right there and now we can fire this you'll see the the disconnector is still in contact there's nothing to knock it out of place yet the, the hammer does that as soon as you pull back on it it breaks that connection you'll see it open up right now but because of the uh, the trigger plunger spring tension it's going to reset itself everything is caught right now if by chance you have the let me fire this off again and you leave your finger in contact with it the hammer will come back disconnect and stay disconnected it will not reset the ha the engagement the sear and the hammer have engaged, but until this trigger, this uh, uh, the trigger itself goes forward, I'll let me get, let it go now. It won't catch. The best way I can show this is I'm gonna let me fire this again. I'm gonna take the trigger uh, return spring back out, so there's no tension. On it. You'll see this now again. Cock the hammer back, it reset, but the hammer is disconnected, and it stayed disconnected. But the hammer reset, it always resets, it's under tension from the hammer strut spring, and also the little disconnector spring in here. But it did catch, you cannot move that hammer forward right now, until again, until the trigger moves forward. Now, I know a spring in there, so I'm going to push it forward. It rolls forward and catches it. Now that can be fired once again. Hammer comes back. Disconnector disconnects. If the trigger is in the rear, you can't pull the, the hammer reset again. You'll notice that the hammer 
reset, but the disconnector did not. Let me push it forward. Actually, I can put the uh, spring back at the at this point and show you a few other things. Let me. It's a small little. Sorry about that. It's a very small little set screw, so you got to be really careful with it. Again, with one hand, this is kind of a tough operation. Oops! You can't put it in when the hammer is at, the hammer stretch spring is cocked. It's got to be all the way forward. So I've got to reset the hammer, or uh, excuse me, reset the disconnector. Drop the hammer. Once the hammer spring and strut is out of the way, I can reinstall this little pin. You saw it already pushed on the plunger, it's headed out that way. So now everything is back to normal operation. Pull the hammer back at the the sear is riding on the hammer. The hammer action comes back, catches, no problem. Can be fired immediately again because the trigger was pushed forward by the trigger return spring. But if I hold that spring there, you'll see again. It did not reset. I'm going to hold on to it. As soon as I let go of my finger, it starts to reset again. This is why we won't go into much detail about it now. Uh, maybe another date or time, but I how I polish these different areas and makes that the trigger uh, return spring definitely is one of the most impactful things to your trigger pull overall. I found that the hammer strut spring, while it does impact it, it uh, is not as much as the trigger return spring in here. So that's a lot of your uh, trigger pull weight. The other finest, the difference between a ruler cut and a good cut is actually up here in the sear, en sear engagement area, which, uh, you know, shortens it up and uh, reduces the pull. But overall, it's a combination of all these things that make a, a Ruger 1022 uh, trigger work. I hope I've covered everything here today. Oh, I want to back up one point because I was talking about the polish right here around the, around the bolt or the mag plunger. Because it rubs on the bolt release as it goes in and out, I found it to drag there quite often, and that's why I polish that. Because it, it reduces, again, if I can eliminate all metal to metal contact, reduce the friction, you're going to have a better action. Folks, I hope I've covered a thing today. I hope I've done a good job for you, and we will see you another day. Thank you.